everybody, we are super excited to introduce to you our project. Our group consists of uh, Merrick Reagan, David, Christopher, Johanna, Peter, and myself, Ingrid. Um, we have chosen a village located in the mountains of Myanmar. Uh, it's five and a half kilometers from Kalab railway station, and the roads up to our city are very small and difficult to go by. Uh, we estimated there are about 150 houses in our village, and as the average uh, household in Myanmar is five people, we have estimated about 750 people in our village. Uh, the school system primary is four years, five years. <laughs> Middle school is four, and high school is two, making their entire schooling 11 years. The school year is about the same as that in Great Britain, probably because of the colonization. So they have a long a summer break. Um, and then they're back in school most of the year. Uh, this is the couple guided climate, and we are in the AW. A stands for warm climate all 12 months of the year, but they have a pronounced dry season and a pronounced uh, rainy season. It's very similar to that of the neighboring countries, as you can see from the map, but also that of the Caribbean. Um, as you can see, the should be in better resolution. The weather, the war, <coughs> it's quite warm when it's raining, uh, but it's also colder in the winter, but never significantly cold. Here it says 15 degrees and this is 20. Um, however, during the rainy season, the rain is extreme compared to that of Europe. This is, on this side you can see 200 millimeters per month uh, in precipitation, so that's very much. Uh, here you can see when they're in school and not. They're out of school in June and July, but as you're back in August, our school needs to be fully functional also during extreme monsoon season, so that we had to consider. However, as it's never particularly cold, we thought less of isolation and of heating. Um, for our energy consumption, we assume that the school will be operative six hours of every day. So therefore we have, uh, and by that calculation, using 40 luminaires, 4 computers, and 15 power outlets, we've estimated about 7,000 watt hours per day. Um, and we will use both solar power and hydropower. Uh, during winter season, when it's sun, the sun is stable and you can be certain of the daylight hours, we will only use the solar power system. Uh, and we will need about 8 solar powers, like this one, to fulfill that need during winter. But during uh, summer, when it's raining, the sun hours are less certain, and we'll therefore supplement with hydropower. Uh, this is the PICO system. We will gather rainwater in a linked gutter system that will lead it to a pipe, and this pipe will go about 20 meters down and lead the water to a turbine. Uh, this turbine convert is connected to a generator that converts rotating power to electrical power. So, and it will also solve our problem with a lot of water on our house because it will lead it away. Uh, and that will make the power enough. For water for the school, we will pump clean groundwater from 100 meters below ground uh, using solar power to a water storage about 10 meters above ground. And it will be clean and therefore also the water pressure and water access will be very stable for our school. This has been well tested and is also being supported by UNICEF in Myanmar. So we know that it is, is a functional system. Uh, for sanitary facilities, we will use uh, a bio latrine with a dry toilet technology that will not use a lot of water because we don't want to waste our water or pump water everywhere. Um, this will make organic manure that again can be used as fertilizer. Um, because of floods, we needed to extend our pipe up to our school and also we built a cement barrier around it to protect it from floods. Uh, when we started our thinking process, we started it by hand drawing many sketches and in the end we ended up on this. The school itself is lifted one meter and a half above ground um, and then on ground level we have a playground and also gardens. Uh, where we can cultivate the fields. Uh, so this protects from snakes and from floods. So it will make our school safer and functional all year round. 
In Myanmar, uh, the most common materials are wooden houses and bamboo. The red is rural, and as you can see, bamboo is the most common in the rural places. Uh, because our world can be very bad, we don't want to transport a lot of materials, but as bamboo grows all over Myanmar, we can use it, the bamboo from where we are. Therefore, we chose to use mostly bamboo for our project. Uh, bamboo is traditional and well used. It can be made, can be used for all parts of smaller houses, and it's also very, very cheap. To make it more stable for our house, for a school which is quite big, we will also use reinforced concrete. Uh, this is our school. Welcome. Uh, as you can see, it's lifted above ground to protect it, and it has an entrance in the front and the back. The roof has been extended so as to make a dry walkway for the children, also during long swim season. This is our school. It has four classrooms, each fit in 15 students, uh, and also an additional classroom that can be used for arts and crafts and other things. Uh, and toilets and teachers' apartments, because the teachers will come to live. Um, our house is not flowing. This is just to show the foundation. We have holes every three meters in every direction uh, to support it. <coughs> and these poles are made from bamboo filled with uh, filled with reinforced concrete to make them stable and to move the forces acting on the building and down into the ground. Um, our school is made up of several smaller blocks, four smaller blocks that looks like this one. This one has been, um, this one has been uh, calculated for all our expected forces such as loads, wind, uh, and seismic forces because there are earthquakes in Myanmar and it makes our school incredibly duplicable. You can move it, you can make it bigger, you can make it smaller where you need to move it to. Um, and here you can see how we divide it into the four blocks, one, two, three, four. And we also have a canteen in the middle where the children can eat. And yes, as I said, the, we have four classrooms. These four classrooms fit 15 students each, making the school fit in for 60 students. Um, and it will cost, in materials and building, it will cost about 36,000 euros. But it will be an amazing opportunity for the children in this rural village. Thank you for your attention. <laughs>